Hello guys, welcome to Sim UK. This is Fishing Barrent Sea, something I've been looking forward to getting my hands on for a long time now. This is not the release version, this is pre-release version, so there might still be some bugs and stuff in here. The whole point of me playing this before release date is that I can give some feedback to the developers if there are any issues that I encounter, and um, also, you guys get to have a bloody good look at it before uh, release day comes around and you can decide if you want to buy it or not. I think there's a good chance you're going to want to buy it. The reason why I say that is because I've just spent 15, say 20 minutes playing this game. Then I had an issue, my end, nothing to do with the game, but I had to restart my PC as a result. So uh, yeah, in those 20 minutes I'd say already I'm thinking this is going to be a winner. But let me just run you very quickly through the options that we've got here. So we've got audio settings, mu music effects, ambient noise, etc, etc, etc. Let's just kill the music because... Uh, we don't need it there's quite a few options i mean not spectacular amount of options but quite a few options available uh, for video it starts off in windowed full screen let's just go full screen and see how that happens okay so there's the first bug then we'll go back to full screen i hope that that fixes that flashy stuff okay so there's one minor issue there but like i say this isn't release version yet it's not actually coming out for another two weeks i think so they've got plenty of time to identify these bugs and get them fixed um, and get it out to you in a perfect working state camera control this is uh, obviously for first person well actually not just first person first and third person controls looking pretty good and these are the keys you can see it's already set up for an Xbox 360 controller, I'm going to be using keyboard and mouse today. In fact, I might grab the controller halfway through and just uh, mix it up a little bit halfway through. So that's all looking pretty good. We're going to say OK there. Um, I'll just click the credits for a second, and you can see that Fishing Barrency is developed by Misk Games. Now, I need to go away and do some research on Misk Games, but based on the 20 minutes I've played of this game so far, I think they're pretty decent guys. And you can see, if you look here at the sort of ambient lighting and the, uh, the, the detail that we've got, the water isn't the most spectacular water I've ever seen. It's good enough, I think. But the boat is very, very nicely detailed. Um, I'm quite impressed with that. And this is the actual boat that we're going to be taking out to start with. So, um, yeah, without further ado, let's uh, jump in and get going. So, guys, after a calamity of errors at my end, uh, I've recorded about two hours of gameplay footage with no microphone. So you've just got me babbling away in the background but with no audio whatsoever. So, uh, I'm going to just basically start again, start a new career. Um, this this game's been sent to me pre-release, so there are bugs in it, there are a few issues, uh, but they'll, they're going to be fixed before uh, release day. The developers are in communication with all of the YouTubers, myself and other YouTubers as well. We're all sort of giving feedback and providing bug details, and they're on it already. They're working really hard, so I don't think there's going to be any problem. I can tell you already, before we even start into this, I think a lot of you are going to find this very, very good, and you're going to be totally excited and interested in it, and you're going to want to get it straight away on release day. I'm pretty certain of that. Uh, it's going to cost $19.99 on Steam, and it releases on the 7th of December. It's looking really good. Some of you might have some reservations about certain things, but from what I've seen so far, I'm totally hooked. I think it's brilliant. Really, really good. So let's start a new career. Uh, unfortunately, you can't create your own character. Uh... So at the moment, at least, uh, you can't change anything. So I'm going to be Sim UK, mail, start with the tutorial, begin the game. Okay, so I'm basically just going to read through the tutorial and explain to you uh, what I've done because I have learnt quite a bit already. Um, and we'll just swing through this as quickly and seamlessly as we can. Welcome to Fishing Barren Sea, where you begin your career with a sturdy little wooden fishing boat with sluggish controls that you have inherited from your grandfather. With such humble beginnings, it will be a long road to becoming one of the legendary mariners of the Barren Sea, but let us not get distracted with dreams of fortune and glory. Let's start with the basics. Try to increase or decrease the throttle with W and S, respectively. You can also control the rudder with A and D. When you're ready, press V to switch to first person mode. This will allow you to move around the deck of your boat. So click dismiss, hit the V button. That brings you into first person view. 
In first person mode you can also move around with the WASD keys, you can interact with some objects on the boat with the E key, try moving around the boat and then when you are ready open the door by pressing E then walk to the chair in the wheelhouse and press E again to interact with it. Now it's E to sit down, F to get up. Not quite sure why that is but that's the way it is and it's okay, it's fine. In terms of textures and modelling on the boat I think this is fantastic. I see lots of boats very similar to this on um, like fishing shows where people are in Scotland are going around on the locks. These are the kind of boats they have. So you can see in the wheelhouse there, that's the main wheel with the main controls. You've got uh, a compass over there. You've got, I think that's a speedo or maybe that's the speedo and that's the temperature gauge, something like that. Uh, and you've also got like a GPS system there as well. But you can also control it from outside. So you go inside when you want to keep warm and you you know it's wet and miserable outside have a cup of tea or whatever but also when you're out here and you're actually doing the fishing this thing here i don't know what it's really called but it's what pulls the line in uh so if you're outside and you're working on the boat and you're just moving between the boys or the lines that you've set up then you'll be out here doing that it works brilliantly and if i if i just grab this for a second and you look at the inside wheel you can see that i'm controlling both like so so it's very accurate in, in terms of uh, control mechanisms for this particular boat. This is very small. You can upgrade the boats to huge, huge, enormous, proper fishing galleon things. I don't know. Uh, okay, let's go inside. There's one more thing I want to show you before we jump in the uh, captain's seat. And that's just down here, which is the, uh, the downstairs, as it's known. Now, I can't grab that hammer, which is a bit odd. I don't really understand why it's there. If you can't use it, maybe just part of the tutorial you can't use it. Maybe you can repair your boat using the hammer. I don't really know. Pretty early into the game. What you can do is light the furnace. Which is a, a cool little touch. Now I'm not sure if you can get cold yourself as a character. And maybe you need to warm yourself up. Because it can get pretty cold out in the Barents Sea. But uh, yeah, who knows. There's quite a lot of attention to detail. So I just thought I'd share that with you. There's not much else you can do in there really, so we'll just come back out of there and we'll sit in the captain's seat as instructed. Once you're sitting in the chair, you can also drive the boat in first person mode using the same controls as in third person mode. Press F to exit the chair and walk around. Press V to return to third person mode and drive towards the long line that's been set nearby in third person mode. So long line effectively is, uh, it's over here by those things. There we go, I can see it. So long line is effectively a long line with multiple hooks on it. And uh, each of the hooks are individually baited. It's set, um, a buoy marks its location. And um, basically you leave it for like 20 hours and then you come back and you pull it in. And uh, you pull it in using this machine on the side of the boat there. And um, each hook, you hope, will have a fish on it and you pull the fish into the boat. and. That's it really, that's long lining in a nutshell. Now what will happen here is you, you put the boy in, you start driving away from that boy and each time a hook comes along you bait it and you basically have a long string of uh, baited hooks and then um, the line is strung in between the two boys. So to pull it in you need to get uh, alongside on the right hand side which is the starboard. Uh, in order to haul in the long line, you need to position the boat such that both of the boys are at starboard, the right-hand side of the boat, and at least one of the boys is within a few meters of the line hauler. A semicircular region will be highlighted green when one of the boys is positioned close enough to the line hauler. An arrow will point to the further boy and will also highlight green once this boy is at starboard, the right side of the boat. Haul in the long line using the pick up gear button in the bottom left or by pressing E. So this is the pick up gear button down here. Um, but I just use E. E is much easier. Or you can press F and actually get up from the seat and actually go to the machine and do it. Although when I did that last time it did cause a, an issue. Like I say there are a few little bugs that are still being ironed out before it goes up for sale, up for release. So um, it's nothing to worry about. It's not a big thing. Um... So yeah, basically, if I just dismiss that, you can see the two boys there. 
Now what I'm aiming to do is get close enough to the first one that I can hook it on to this puller in a type thing and uh, that will pull in uh, the line effectively which is why you want the second boy to also be on your right hand side so that uh, you can pull the line in nice and straight. Now I'm not quite close enough to that. And if you look over here in this area here you can see that we have this yellow line and that indicates our current throttle position. So this is maximum throttle, this is reverse and this is neutral, this sort of grey square here. Um, and this is our compass so you can see we've also got a compass up here but this is the one I'm using to drive with at the moment. This is your speed, this is your current fuel situation, this is your current, I think this just refers to your hull. So if this gets bashed about too much then maybe the boat will sink, I don't know. Um, so yeah, that's all the information you need to know there. Uh, so let's hook this in. I'm just going to hit E this time and that will pop up with a, a message asking me if I, if I would like to haul in the long line, which of course I do. When hauling in a long line you have, you have to time your mouse click when you collect each fish. The smaller the circle is, the better you perform and the better your haul will be, as indicated by the bonus percentage indicator. Indicator colours are red, which means you've missed it, yellow, which means okay but a low result, green, which means good, medium result, and blue, which means perfect, best result. So basically, you know, um, if you go to hook a fish in, you could lose a bit of the fish, but if you, if you get it perfect, boom, you get the whole fish. So... Uh, there's like 250 hooks on each of these lines, but you won't be there for 250 hauls in. So basically, it's kind of doing an amalgamation of that for you. So I had some success and some difficulty with this. Now, that's a perfect, but not a good perfect. Now, you see this little white dot? That's important. You can have that little white dot not pointing at the circle and if it's not pointing at the circle then the mouse won't respond properly as I discovered earlier so the little white dot although it doesn't mention anything about it does kind of need to be oh that was terrible does need to be pointing towards the fish and uh, you'll see that these circles um, get smaller and then they get bigger again so you're trying to get it when it said it's smallest like so 21% that was pretty good um, but they all come at different speeds and different positions I think based on what I've seen and as the weather as the weather changes and the sea gets more choppy you'll find it's more difficult to uh, accurately do that so it's pretty good so we've pulled in 115 pollock uh, 44 haddock and 10 redfish so we'll say okay now you need to gut the fish. Once you've pressed start, you need to move the mouse from left to right in a continuous motion. Try to keep the knife over the blue dots to maximise the gutting quality of the fish. Press start to begin gutting the fish. This is really difficult. Um, you'd think it was really straightforward. You've got a line of little dots going along the fish. Trying to move your mouse along that line is really tough because it's it's forcing itself all over the place there's also some other dots big ones just sort of floating around and i don't really know what they are so uh, this is very much me learning as i play once i've got five stars but that's only happened once most of the time it's two and a half three and a half stars at maximum let's have a go and you'll see what i mean so i'm not really sure what this blue thing represents and this one's going uh, see it's all gone wrong now it was going pretty well well it wasn't actually look I missed loads there three and a half stars kind of what I predicted actually let's try again see if I can do any better I think I missed the first one five stars for that amazing but it's it's actually really genuinely very tricky because this blue thing is just all over the place Four stars that's pretty good so anything above two and a half stars basically makes you more money by gutting the fish but if you if you fail to get two and a half stars or more see that was only three stars that's not going to be worth as much money so I did okay there not great but okay but that was actually really quite tricky 
as I'm sure it is in real life. So maybe that's a good uh, sort of simulated experience for that. Good job on collecting the first long line. A mission waypoint has been set on your map to another long line, which has been out for a number of hours already. Hurry to haul this long line before too much time passes. The long line must be picked up before 48 hours have elapsed, or else the line will be lost. The colour of the boys in the mini-map, that's over here, indicate the amount of time they have been out for. Blue equals not ready to be picked up. Green equals ready to be picked up, best result. Yellow means it's starting to degrade, medium result, so you're going to lose some fish there. And red means soon to be lost. Basically, you know, other fish have eaten your catch and some have dropped off the line. And if you don't get there in time, you'll lose the entire line. So that's it. That's how that works. So let's get over there as quick as we can, sort of over in this direction. Now I mentioned uh, right at the beginning, I think, that this boat is meant to be pretty sluggish and slow. Um, I'm not actually finding that to be the case. I find it pretty nippy and um, pretty responsive to my controls, which is good. Uh, whether or not that's realistic is open for debate. But um, I can't see this line in front of me right now. I'm sure it's there somewhere. And I've just spotted as well um, you've got this indicator here for your hull. Um, now I imagine when that gets to the top, that means you're full, and you can't you can't pull any more fish in. Um, and also, yellow indicates gutted fish. Uh, I presume there will be a different colour for fish that are not gutted. Incidentally, although gutting fish potentially earns you more money when you sell it, um, you don't have to do it. You can just sell it uh, ungutted if you so wish and it's nice I think and important to have the option to uh, to pick and choose what you do the simulator after all excuse me I just need a quick sip of drink here so whilst we're just coming in up to these boys I'll try and get some uh, some uh, views for you on the boat you can see here we've got some some night lights should be one the other side whoa there we go green and red to indicate starboard and port. Uh, incidentally a good way to remember starboard from port is that port has four letters as does left. That's how I was taught, that's how I remember. Just thought I'd share that with you. Right we're coming up on the first of the boys. Now I don't know this boat well enough to know when to pull the throttle off so I'm just going to kind of guess at it. You can see this yellow marker here. Oh, I can't zoom in on it. But the yellow marker is a uh, is a waypoint, and the boys are red. They look like boys. I think we're going to be okay here. Might just need a little bit of extra forward momentum. Yep, stopped a bit early there. How long we got left? Twelve hours and forty-six minutes. So actually, yeah. If they've got to be pulled in within 24 hours, I think we've got plenty of time left. Anyway, we're on target, so let's press E and we can pull in this haul. Again, making sure that the white dot is relatively close to where we want it. I thought that was better. I thought that was more perfect than the score I got. That was 10%. That was better still. 25 is the best I've got. Oh, that was not so good. Plus 16. It's interesting. Seem to be getting more points for uh, for good catches than perfect catches. Not sure. Most of these have been good. Which is fine. 27%. Wow, just beat my own record. So there are... I mean... Oh, see, talking and trying to do this is tricky. I missed that one completely. That's not good. Um... There is a skill element to this game, and I think that's brilliant because there is a skill to fishing. Even fishing, you know, in this sort of style, there is a skill to it, knowing where to set the line, being organised and getting back to the line in time, etc., etc. Especially in rough weather, weather, in rough weather. 
boom, 23%. Not bad, not bad at all. So I love that. 127, 70 and 30. Same, same fish as before. Storage is now full. So we say OK. Try gutting the fish again. Gutting a fish will usually increase the price of the fish when selling unless you gust, gut the fish particularly badly. Less than two stars. Note that the port will still buy ungutted fish from you, as I already mentioned. So we're at the gutting table. We'll click start. And uh, oh, this is so not easy. It really isn't. See, I'm not doing that. I'm not forcing it all the way up there. How do we do? So that was nearly five stars. That's four and a half stars or whatever. All over the place. For less than four stars that time. It's going to be... It's, it's one of these things that there's, there's a technique to it. And once you suss it out, you'll be a master. But until you do, it's very tricky. Congratulations on hauling in your second long line. This is the map interface. You can open this using the full screen button on the mini map in the bottom right or by pressing the M key. Using the buttons below, you can set custom waypoints to locations that you've previously visited and then fast travel to these locations. I'll discuss that in a moment. The area of the map that is exposed depends on the boat's radar. You should consider upgrading it if you want to fast travel to locations that are further away. Head to Hammerfest Port, where you'll be able to sell the fish you've just collected. A mission waypoint has been set on your map. You can either drive to the port yourself, or if you want, you can set a custom waypoint route and fast travel there. Now, two things. First thing, driving the boat there might seem like an unnecessary pain in the ass. It doesn't actually take that long, to be honest with you. We're talking maybe two minutes, so nothing serious to get from here to the port that is um, the benefit of doing that is that you cover more kilometers and if you want to unlock bigger boats you have to have a license and to get the license you need to travel a certain number of kilometers so actually sailing the boat rather than fast traveling which doesn't count is an important part of the game but for this i'll fast travel because it's quicker now the other thing i wanted to mention about fast travel if we just scroll out here, you can see <clears throat> here's the port that we're going to. Now, part of the port, there's like a jetty here. So if I try and place a waypoint here, you can't cross land. Now, I just thought maybe this was the sand here. Like, you know, we've got too close to the shore. So I tried to, you know, different places, try to get as close as I can. Basically, what it's saying is, you can't go in a straight line to there. You have to set waypoints. And that's it. That's all it is. So if I click fast travel now, you'll see the boat start zooming in. So that's five kilometers right there. Uh, and to give you some idea of how far you need to travel in order to um, unlock bigger boats, I think 50 is the first marker. And then it goes up to 100, 200, 450, 800, something like that. I think they could even put those higher, but I don't know. I don't. I haven't played enough of the game to know that that's a good idea. But I, I think they're a bit low. I think uh, possibly they ought to be a bit higher, but that's just me. That's just me. Okay, so uh, we'll exit the map and you'll see that we are here at the port. And uh, this icon here is my waypoint marker. Uh, the other icon here is their waypoint marker. And basically, we've just got to go and park inside of this purple area. Now, a little thing will pop up here that allows you to go into port. But because this is a tutorial, um, it will basically do it all for us. Mission complete. Congratulations on reaching Hammerfest. To sell your fish, you should dock at Hammerfest by entering the rectangular port zone. Clicking on the dock at port button, which is the one that I said will pop up. After you're done, you might consider setting some long lines of your own. Good luck. So we've just earned 10,000 krona as a reward. We can dismiss this and go ahead and continue the mission. So I'm going to call that 
there for the very first video. It's uh, sort of 20 minutes, half an hour, just as an introduction to the game. I'm going to put this up. I'm going to try and put up a whole bunch of these different mission tutorials and so on and so forth. Tr just trying to get as much gameplay as I can in over the next week so that you guys can get a good look at everything that's available. Now, one thing they have done is um, given me a save game which has basically, I assume, everything unlocked. I haven't even looked at it yet because um, I, I'm one of these people who would rather do it all myself from the beginning, even if that takes me a long time. But I know you guys might want to see some bigger stuff. So let me know in the comments section, A, if you want me to do that, and I'll start putting together some... Um, I'll, I'll load that game in and start putting together some um, more complex further on stuff so that you can see what that's like. And um, if you have any questions or comments or just let me know your thoughts on the game so far, then please let me know in the comment section. I'll be happy to get back to you and I'll look forward to reading it. Till next time, take care. Goodbye for now. Yeah.